Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. So, uh, got a friend, his, uh, it's the brown van you saw me do the AC compressor diagnosis on. Well, the transmission died in it. So this is his other van. This is the one I put heads on for a while. It was overheating last year, and he kind of parked it. Um, so, uh, I'm going to try to diagnose the uh, overheating issue on this guy. And so, um couple of quick things is um, the oil was overfilled like it was halfway up the dipstick it had five or six quarts too much oil in it it was smoking like crazy I got that oil change put the five quarts back in it it smelled like it hadn't been changed since I did the heads and probably hasn't been as because I'm sure I put a pure later filter on it at the time because I had one and it still had the same pure later filter you know, people drive their cars for years and don't change the oil, and then they wonder why they die. Uh, anyway, with that, the engine sounds better. It's not smoking anymore. That's all good. So, the other thing is, it was completely, like, out of coolant. And um, I added coolant to it. It had big air pockets in it. I got all the air bled out of the system. That's all good. So, the other thing is, I wanted to make sure I didn't have a cracked head. So, I got my... Uh, head gasket tester here out with this is where you put the blue fluid in and then I take my uh, my funnel here that has an angle adapter and hook that up because this radiator caps at an angle and then hold that inside the funnel and uh, we did that it did not turn green after about 15 minutes so we don't have a blown head gasket or cracked head so uh, after doing all that, I let it run. Um, it comes up to temperature pretty well, but then um, it starts to slowly overheat. Um, and as the temperature gauge is getting higher, the fans were not spinning. So I popped open this fuse box. It was full of ants. Uh, we, we cleaned all that crap out. I cleaned the connectors on the bottom and everything and reconnected them. Um, but we gotta find out why the fans aren't working. And so that's where we're going to start. So we see there's three relays here. Um, there's a, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a cool fan, a cool fan one, and a cool fan two. Okay. So, uh, cool fan one and cool fan two are probably these two, uh, nine and ten. Now this is cool fan and cool fan two. Okay, and then there's also a cool fan one, which is number twelve. That's this one right here. So what we gotta do is if we energize this relay right here which is uh, cool fan 2 it'll actually uh, kick on that fan in fact <laughs> I'll give a wiring diagram to explain why this works alright so here is the diagram on how these fans work uh, this is a pretty typical GM setup the uh, one for my Pontiac is very similar uh, so a lot of people have asked me questions about this and they get confused because there's these three relays that control these fans and it's easy to get confused as to what's going on so you have the cool fan one relay and this is tripped down here by this low speed cooling fan rail relay control so when this gets pulled to ground it energizes this relay which closes this latch now you think that would turn on this uh, cooling fan left, right? Just by itself, but it doesn't. So the cooling fan left actually doesn't have like a direct ground. So what happens is it clicks that closed, it comes down here, sends the voltage through to this fan, and then on this grounded side of that fan, it comes back up and it comes to this other relay. Now this relay, its normal position is to this pin, which I believe is the 87A or it might be 87, whichever sites normally passes through when the relay is not energized. And you can see that that would come over here 
it would then find its ground path through the cooling fan on the right and then that fan's ground path continues to a ground. So when this clicks on, this relay is normally in this position, it clicks both fans on but they run in series to each other so each fan is essentially getting half the voltage, 6 volts, right, to run on so they're in low speed. So we'll kick both fans on in low speed. And so what happens then when the high speed cooling fan relay control kicks in? So this clicks shut, right? It then takes both of these relays and pulls them to ground. This is why if you try to control you know, either of these relays by pulling the signal to ground, all of a sudden this fan will come on over here, but not over here, and I'll show you why. And that's where you can get really confused, troubleshooting, thinking something strange is going on. So once it closes this relay, right, boom, it shifts the ground path for that fan over to here, which sends it directly to ground. So if this fan is still engaged over here, it allows this fan to now run at full speed. It's getting a full 12 volts. It's no longer in series with that other fan. At the same time, it'll click this relay shut, which will then energize this path with 12 volts, which is fine because this relay is no longer connected, right? So this is just open now on, on this side. So this junction doesn't matter. And then it will click and put full voltage to this guy and it finds its path through ground here. So the way this works is the computer wants only uh, low speed fans, right? It engages the low speed fan relay control and it'll run both fans in series. And then when it runs to run them at high, it engages the high speed fan relay control and it will then have this one running at full speed if this is still engaged, which it should be, and then I'll have this one running at full speed. So when you put this to ground here, um, you'll get some weird results. And one of the things that can happen even is if you're trying to ground this uh, control on this side of this relay to activate this relay, it'll activate that relay, right? Like right there. But you, you, you can have that relay out and you'll stick your test light in here, right? And provide it a path to ground. And you'll hear this relay click. And you'll hear this fan come on. And you're like, what's going on? I took this relay out, but it's engaging this other relay. Well, that's why. Because these two relays are controlled together. So from what I'm what I'm seeing, you know, I, I can take this relay to ground. And this engages this fan, right? Um... Since that's turning on that fan, it tells me this relay is okay. Um, we'll check this 5-pin relay. But I'm suspecting that my problem is actually in this relay right here. Um, which is not engaging the fans at low speed. And so until it gets up to a real high temperature, it can only click on. And it'll only run the one fan then because this one's not providing a path. So let's go take a look at this relay and see if it's good and uh, see what's going on. Works. But if you pull out Cool Fan 2 and you provide a ground through a test light to this pin right here, it will energize that fan. So let me go turn the ignition on and get a test light and we'll do that. Okay, so I'm back over here at the fuse box. I've got my test light hooked up. You can see it's getting a good ground. Um, yes, all the fuses are good. This is your cooling fan. This is your other cooling fan. It's all fine. So, um, what we want to do is find the control pin for this. So, I think that's 86, that's 85. Where's 80? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm reading it upside down. That would be the problem. So, 86 and 85. So, actually, I think 85 here is oh, 86 because it goes this way so we just look here where is 86 going to be it looks like 86 would actually be this one I mean I wish they just label these relays a little better 
I'm getting too blind. Okay, so it looks like 86 is actually going to be this pin. So if we come back here and we take this pin and we probe it to the ground, we hear our other relay click over on this side. Oh, I got the cooling fan unplugged. Hang on, let me plug it back in. Here's the control side where that relay would be. That engages our right cooling fan. Our left cooling fan still won't engage. Um, so what's happening there is the control of this ray is tied in with the control of this relay. So when you trip this one, you're actually tripping that one and kicking that fan on. So that tells us that that's good. So what we can do here is go ahead and put this relay back in. Just for a quick test. Hang on, let me get this one out. Okay, and so our control side on this relay again would be 86 and 86. Eighty-six is right here. So this is that. So when I hit this one, it should make the other relay click. And it is making it click. So I know that that control is working. Um, so the question is, this low speed, this relay here controls the low speed fan. So we want to test that and see what, what's going on there. So um, what we should have is power on one of these. There's power, and there's power. And so, now we're gonna go find pin 86. Which is right here, that's this one. So I'll put this relay back in, and then I'll slide under here to hit pin 86. There's no clicky. It's not even clicking. Let me Make sure we're seated good. Slide under there and hit that pin. Let me make sure we're not supposed to engage it on the opposite corner. Oh, there's clicking. So it clicked and it did come on. It did kick the fan on. So that relay is good. So all of our relays good. Our grounds are good. But we still have fans that don't seem to be coming on when they're supposed to. So, let's, let's get the scan tool out and see what the electric coolant temperature sensor is saying. Because these fans are all controlled by the PCM. Alright, so I, I went ahead and started it. And I kicked on the uh, AC, which kicks on the low speed fans. And so both of these fans are running in series, like we're supposed to, on that. So now with that on... I'm going to show you, if I go and kick in uh, the control side of this relay, then I should all of a sudden get the high speed fans to kick on. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is get my scan tool out, hook that up. Let's monitor the temperature and let's see what we see on the scan tool as far as the temperature. Okay, so what I'm going to do is watch this uh, temperature here and just we'll let it run and heat up. It's a nice hot day. We're up to 180 here now. I'm uh, hoping you can see that with the reflections. We'll see. But uh, we'll let that heat up. 
and it should open the thermostat around 195 or so and uh, then we should see it start to keep climbing and I'd say by the time it gets to 215 the fans should be running and if they're not running then what we're going to do is hook our test light to a positive and then go in on that control side pin and see if the computer is providing a signal to energize that relay. Scanner down her said, we'll check the test line. So I think we'll see it here. I'm not getting any signal there. From the computer and turn this off. 226, they can call me. So yesterday these fans wouldn't kick on at all. Um, it was getting pretty hot. Now we're back down to 216, 214. The fans are still running. Uh, when I popped this open, there was a bunch of ants and crap all in this box. It was infested. I took cleaned out all the contacts with contact cleaner. I took the bottom part, cleaned that out. I found a few green crusties, cleaned those off as good as I could, put everything back together. And that may have been all that was wrong. So, this is the first time I've actually brought it up the temperature since then. Uh, it was getting late last night. So, I think I think we're good. It's cooling back down. We're at 205. We're good. So, I think it was just the green crusties and the ants. I also had to mix some uh, wasps from this uh, report. I don't know if they're wasp reports or whatever. They go in a nest in the door. And uh, we put a new battery in it yesterday, too, because the battery sat flat for a year. Luckily, I uh, advanced to get back under warranty. All right, folks. So I hope this helps you guys understand a little bit more about how the GM cooling system works. We know that the low-speed cooling fans at least should kick on at 226 now. It does on this vehicle anyway. But uh, I'm ready to release this one back to the owner. I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom. It's all about keeping them from getting pulled over, folks.